Hello, my name is Akshat and I'm going to be doing the communication requirement 6. I'm going to be teaching Krishiv uh, about first aid. So I'm going to be teaching um, like the first aid for object in the eye, bite of a worm by the animal, puncture wounds from a splinter, nail and fish hook, serious burns of like partial thickness or second degree, uh, burns and heat, heat exhaustion, shock, heat stroke and dehydration. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, first thing we're going to learn is object in the eye. So, as you can see here uh, in the image, there's an object in the like bottom part of the eye. Is that a tiny rock? It, like, it could be dust particles. So, okay. basically, uh, how objects in the eye can form are if you're working, um, like you're cutting wood or you're um, wor doing woodwork. It like could, something might go in your eye. Yeah, anything could get, go in your eye. Like, like glass or anything like that. That's just an object that could uh, go in your eye, make splinters and stuff like that. Right, so you'd wanna, whenever you're working with wood to prevent it, you probably wanna um, like wear glasses to mm -hmm. prevent it go from going in your eye. But not like the glasses you're wearing right now. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it depends. If it's like, it, I would recommend wearing the big ones, the science goggles thing. But yeah. uh, these things still work. I know, but they're not as safe. Yeah, I know. It wouldn't be as safe. Like, you, when you're using paint and stuff like that, you don't want to stain it. So, how to treat it. So, first, we'd ask the person to blink. Um, like rapidly? Blink rapidly, yeah. Because then the tears or the water in your eye can flush the object out. Right? And if that does not work, or the object is still in the eye, uh, you could take a um, tissue and you could, like... You, you would basically it, use, like, yeah, you would like take it With out. the corner of the tissue or handkerchief, you would take the object out. Talk about object, I think there's something in my eye. Really? Yeah. Yeah, try blinking rapidly. Wait, really? Yeah, I'm not even lying. Okay. Um, I'll go. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's better. Huh? Okay. I mean, if it still hurts, I can get it. It's fine. All right. It doesn't hurt anymore. Okay, so, yeah. So you take a handkerchief or a tissue and you would. It might have been like an eyebrow. Yeah, but you take like a tissue or handkerchief and you wipe it out with the cor corner, like as you can see in the image here, they're yeah. using it, yeah. And if that doesn't work, just call 911. And they'll take it out. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's your turn. So how do you think you can take uh, like... Um, so first, example, if an eyebrow, that's what happened to me right now, I'll blink rapidly. So, like, the flush it down, like, it goes, I mean, like, or your eyes, like, take it out. Or, uh, yeah, so you can flush it out, yeah. If that doesn't work, I try, like, pull off the, like, take a, get a kerchief, anything, no, like, a to paper towel, something that won't hurt your eye but can take it out, and try taking it out, example. Yeah, like, in the example, you take the hand Example, if you have a eyebrow, like, Take something like a paper towel, something that won't hurt your eyes, and like try picking it up. If that doesn't work, just call 911. Yeah. Alright, so you basically got it. Yeah. Alright, next slide. Alright, bite of a worm, a uh, blooded animal, or a rabid animal. So, the main thing you would want to worry about is rabies. So, you can't do anything about it except wipe the wound uh, and like make sure nothing serious happened. Like, as you can see in the image, there's a dog, like, teeth sink into you, right? And that white uh, white saliva that comes, that's a sign of rabies. So, you go straight to the doctor's office and see if you have rabies. And if so, you would, like... Um, you need surgery. Yeah, you need you need to get that out. You, they'll treat for... Um, yeah. You, they'll treat for uh, rabies. Yeah. And, yeah. So, when... You, you now want to kill or harm the animal because that's just not doing any good. But so you just uh, leave it, go straight to the doctor and get it done. Okay. All right, your turn. So first, uh, just wipe it down. Try not to uh, like example. Uh, like first, I think you should like run away from the dog 
And then when you're safe, you should like probably yeah the bite, uh, the warm blooded animal because it's not always a dog. Well, dog. dog in this example. Yeah. So then you run away from it, uh, wipe it down so there's like nothing too bad, and then check uh, check with the doctor to see if you have rabies or not. If you're not, you're fine. But like don't don't be more careful. Or and if you do go to the go to emergency and they'll take out. Rabies, yeah, they're like treat, yeah, yeah. treat rabies. Alright, you got it. Yeah. Um, puncture wounds from a splinter nail or fish hook. Talking uh, about that, uh, I used I had I had a a splinter. Yeah, I had a splinter before, but I forgot how uh, my parents treated it. Yeah, usually you was, had to pick it up. Yeah, usually they just take a nail and they're like um take out the I remember one day when I came to your house to play, I saw your mom take out a splinter. Yeah, they'll take it out. So the main thing that my parents don't usually do is they don't know that it can cause infection. So splinters can come from anywhere, it can come from glass, wood, wood yeah, wood mainly though. Bench at the house. Yeah, house. that's what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Wood, glass, all that stuff, right? So you, when it gets into your um, hand, it could have infection or anything. It's splinters can be very dangerous, right? So you would like take, you would pull out the um, the splinter with as sterilized fast as you can with sterilized tweezers, yeah. right? If you can or sterilized so it like doesn't uh, affect it yeah affect anything. Yeah, and uh, like you, just how your mom does it, you take take out the uh, skin around it and pull it out. Yeah. Yeah, and then after that, you'd want to make sure that nothing happened, so you'd wash it off and, like, completely. Like, treat it Yeah. with, like, probably wrapping a bandage around. Yeah, or gauze tissues or anything. Mm. Just anything to that sure. will protect it from getting splinter again. Yeah, just to make sure that you don't get an infection, right, is the main thing. Until it heals. Yeah, until it heals. And now the fish, so nail, um, for a nail, the main thing that you want to worry about is tetanus. Because, yeah. yeah, that's mainly what happens for nail, but... Uh, and also rusty stuff. Yeah, for rust and anything, so you go to a doctor for that. And also one dumb thing I did when I was four, so uh, I was using a stapler, and it stapled into my finger, remember I told you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it pained so much, I and my, know. my mom just took it out, and, like, nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, but you definitely want to make sure for tetanus. Uh, I had a tetanus shot. Yeah, yeah. For that. Okay. Like, don't you have a tetanus shot when you're when you're a baby? You do, but you can't always be too sure. People yeah, I know, like the get... COVID uh, vaccine. Yeah, like you get the vaccine, but people are still got corona after that. Yeah. All right. So then a fish hook. This gets this is where it gets tricky. So you wanna follow two steps: push and pull. So you wanna tie a like a um tiny rope or string to the end of the fish hook. And so what you do is you push the fish hook down uh, so that it will get out of the the place in your skin, out of the nerve. Or, so it loses down? Loses yeah, yeah. So it just gets out of the place it is because uh, it might hurt a little bit. You still push it down. And then loosen you pull. It, it loosen it and then like... Yeah. It. And then you just tug it. You just pull it. As much as it hurts, you just pull it. Isn't most fish hooks made out of iron too? So like you might as you might get tetanus from that too. Um, no, I, I, yeah, it could happen, but it's not the the type of thing that's in nail. Like it's not it can't get rusty or stuff like that. Like yeah. the main thing that causes tetanus is rust. rust. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like Mars, is nothing yeah. you know where you want to be if you have if you didn't take your tetanus shot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So your turn. Okay, so first, if if you right, have, so are you doing splinter? I'll do both. I right. no, I'll do all three. So splinter, first you take it off. Uh, your parents take it off, like do the skin out, and then pull it off, and then wipe it, cover it so, with something, so like you don't get uh, what's it called again? Uh, uh, uh infection. Yeah, an infection, and then for uh, nails, uh, try your best to pull it off without uh probably uh. But yeah, without nails, try to pull it off as like well as you can without uh, making go all around in your finger or whatever it's ha it's been in. That's what I think at least, so you don't get tetanus. And then for, same thing as uh, after splinter, wrap it up and wash and wrap it up and so nothing will happen again. Yeah. And for fish hook, uh, 
But so you pull in, that'll hurt a lot. That's what I think. No, and like you and then so it loosens out and then you can pull it out. Yeah, that's same thing with the, the other two things. Like this is how a splinter shot uh fish hook would be, so it'd be inside it. So you push this part of the fish hook, right? Uh so that it gets out of the part that's in your skin gets out of it. Yeah. Like it gets out of the place that's in, like it's locked in there. So you take it out and you push down and then you with the string, you just tug it. Yeah. So it'd be easier. Yeah. All right, next slide. Serious burns, partial thickness, or second degree burns. What's uh, a second degree? Can you first explain me what, like, what, like, serious burn is, like, how it'll look, and same with par partial and second degree? Like, how it looks, or mm -hmm. like what it is? Yeah, how it looks, so I'll, if I get a burn, I'll know. Ah, right, yeah, so... Um, so basically, you know what a first degree burn looks like, right? A first degree is like, you, it's a just, you turn, you hurt. It's no, sunburn is like a totally different thing, but like, you could get first degree burn, but first degree burn is like, um, immediate contact. Like, you, you touch a hot stuff or you touch something, that that would be a first degree burn. Like, how, what happened to your brother? Uh, no, what happened to my brother would be like a second degree burn, maybe. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. because that would like go into the skin. What happened was they went into the skin, and because you know the first degree burn hurts way more than a second degree and third degree burn because it like it just touches the surface of your skin. skin. So when you get burned in a second degree burn, you're like, oh wait, why don't I feel anything? Because it's burning in through your nerves, and your nerves is what uh, like makes you feel everything, right? So you know you have a second degree and third degree burn when you don't feel. Uh, much or, like a third you can't really um it's not it's hard to find um third a second degree and uh third degree yeah it's hard to uh, differentiate I think them. you have to like they'll like cut the skin uh and like my like an emergency and like try to locate from there and take out the back uh like the burnt or dead uh nerves yeah and, you like could. clean it out like that yeah you I could think that's do what that, they do but yeah, but for first degree burns, it's easy to treat. You just wash it with cold water and then put like ice or anything over it. So it cools down? Yeah, so it cools down mainly. And not that much. And any things. remaining thing, uh, like it will heal over time if you want, call 911. But uh, that yeah. would be mainly for second degree and third degree burns. For a like second degree burns. burn, you would want to apply cool water and uh, wet cloths. And the main thing you'd. Uh, difference from first degree burn is calling nine one one because that one's way too serious, and you want to like treat him every like you replace him. you treat re it? yeah you replace the tissue every like every time it gets a little too warm or whatever yeah like so when you have a cold type when you have a and like same with snakes but for, for what I think like try to stop blood circulation as better. But yeah, that's just, where you wrap it. Yeah. yeah, just recently I got a bite on my neck, right? So what I did was I took off my shirt, I wrapped it around the neck, and then wore another shirt over it. Yeah, yeah but it, what that did was it stopped the circulation. Yeah, there. I know. Yeah, I know that's from snake out oh, bite. Yeah. All right, so it's your turn. What do you do for a For a first-degree burn, you, f you have to first cover it up with, like, you know, like, put some cold water and put some nap like something cold on it and then put some ice and then for a second degree burn you need to uh first wash it down try to cool it down a little bit then call uh 911 that's very important from what i see yeah and like heard from you and for uh, and same thing with third degree third degree burn you mainly not want to do anything you just call 911 yeah, I mean, like, so then you, like, then put uh, napkins every time. The other napkin gets a little bit more, nappy, napkin gets a little bit more warmer. I mean, you could do that, but for a third degree burn, I don't think I mentioned this, but for a third degree burn, you want to, um, you, you don't want to re uh, remove any clothing or uh, you don't want to put ointments because that could make it worse. You just call that on one. Cause like and then they'll treat from there. Yeah, because you don't want to uh, make it any Cause worse. It, unless you're a very high strain doctor in these stuff, you shouldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Because they have all the right tools in the yeah. office. And we, and it's 911, the first aid squad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Alright, so heat exhaustion and heat stroke. 
So these two are very uh, important mm-hmm. and different things, right? So heat stroke is way worse from heat exhaustion, right? So like you get t- like you start like for heat stroke you might pass out or something. Yeah, for heat stroke you'll be uh, you like uh, you lose pass- breath, pass out. Yeah, a lot of bad things. Yeah, yeah, you have shock or whatever, right? So. Um, for heat, for both of them, you'd have the person lie down in a cool uh, area yeah, yeah. near shade, right? And then cool them down with the park. Yeah, it's basically if it's darker. Yeah, for like you know heat, uh, for heat stroke and um, heat exhaustion, you want to put wet clothes. Yeah, your, I know that. Yeah, wet clothes all so over. So it cools down your blood. Yeah, you want to cool down your body. And, and that's what I know. There's one very main thing that causes heat, uh, exhaustion, heat stroke is... Staying in the sun a lot. Uh, no, uh, dehydration. So yeah, yeah. the main uh, thing to do for that is rehydrate them. So like if for dehydration, that could be caused a lot by a very hot sun. Yeah. And it'll, that'll cause you to drink more water, but that, that'll also make you more exhausted uh, because sun yeah. i don't know for yeah this heat race for race. heat exhaustion you'd want to um, make them drink water but for heat stroke um i had heat exhaustion before i yeah. drank a lot of water wait when you drink a lot of water no no i had heat exhaustion so i drank a lot of water oh uh, yeah 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 because heat stroke, you'd basically be fainted, like you wouldn't be you able to do it. You'd be very close to death. Yeah, so it's not really easy to drink water. So if you can, you'd want to, but you'd call 911 immediately. And put in as well clothes as well. So like uh, clothes from like the washing machine you didn't put in the dryer yet. Yeah, yeah. You, you try your best to cool them down, not... Cool them down. Not freeze them to death because that could... Like very, like, like decently cold pants, socks... Uh, yeah, shirt, uh, like nothing too too much like hats or gloves, cause I'll warm you up too. Yeah, because um, if you do like if you heat someone up, if the person's hot and then you immediately put like completely cool them down, make it the either way with like you hats, can... gloves, and stuff like that, just to still be heat. Yeah, but if you uh, if you're really hot and then you immediately go into a cold good idea. Place, wait, go go in a shower with wet clothes. Yeah, yeah, that would be something. But if you are hot and you go into a mere cold shower, very cold, you would, uh, like, if you're colder, you go into a mere hot shower, you'd get shocked. And same thing with cold going to... So that's why I wait, wait. like, a couple of minutes so, like, everything... That's, what, yeah, you'd want to cool yourself down a little so that's bit. Everything, that's everything, that's what I do when I play. So, like, after I play, I'm sweating everything. I'll be very hot. I drink water, and then I wait to 10, 20 minutes before I do shower again. Yeah. All right, so it's your turn. How do you... Heat exhaustion and heat stroke. So heat exhaustion, drink a lot of water, and if it's needed, call nine one one. Yeah. And then for heat wait stroke, for heat exhaustion, or heat stroke. Heat exhaustion. No, heat stroke is worse than heat exhaustion. Yeah, and I'm talking about heat exhaustion. If it if it's needed. Yeah, you call If it's needed, you call nine one one. But heat stroke is way more dangerous. Yeah. Uh, so first, you put on wet clothes as wet as possible, but not too wet, or it's freezing, and then. After wearing a couple, like 20, 30 minutes after wearing cold uh, clothes, don't, uh, you you should, might go, you should, no, I'm not, not like, should, like, if it's too, if it's still uh, very, if you still feel uh, bad like that, go into the shower, not too cold, but like. Wait, for heat stroke? Yeah, heat stroke. For heat stroke, you'd be completely, you'd, um, what do you call it, do you have, you'd, like, Faint, you'd like you okay, so then call nine one. You just call nine one. Oh, or yeah. someone who's there and you pass out. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, like um, faint, like you're completely fainted. You can't move. You can't do anything. You just you the only thing you can do is lie down. It's heat stroke. But if you're like you're heat feeling sick. dizzy, you're uh, like you're like oh my god, I'm so but tired. But you still, but you didn't, uh, but you didn't uh, pass out. Try to wear wet clothes. Yeah, you would wet yourself and with cold. And uh, probably go into the shower and yeah. cold water. And you'd want to, um, like, you'd get, get yourself in a cool place. You'd cool yourself down. You can drink water. Like in the ocean and the beach. Yeah, you'd drink water, maybe. Yeah, a lot of water. As, as much as you can. Yeah, heat stroke, you just call 911. Yeah. All right, next. Thing. And if you're, a bit, like, very close to pass out, call 911. Yeah. All right, the next thing. Wait, come here so you can see the images and everything. 
Alright, so for shock. Um, so. What shock? Like, shock is when you're completely, like, fainted. You. Shock can happen with the letter meaning where you're so shocked that you faint or whatever. Or shock can happen where you're, like, your body just. I don't know, like. Yeah. This is like, how you can treat it. Yeah. Place a victim in your shock. Like, shock position. is when you, like. I don't know, like, your brain, yeah, something happens in your brain and you just completely faint. You can't do anything. So, so as an example for in Victor, in shock position, I'll, I'll give an example like this. Like when you're in shock? Yeah, something like this from what I saw in the picture. Yeah, but the main thing that you want to do is you want to levitate your... Legs. Um, you wanna, yeah. You wanna raise your legs. You wanna make them. Uh, you wanna give like cover for them. Like you wanna put a blanket or whatever on them. And, and like as shown in the picture. Yeah, and then uh, so what you wanna do is you place them in that position. Um, you keep the person warm and comfortable, like shown in the picture. It's and a total then, opposite of a, a heat stroke. Yeah, and you yeah because this is like, it's just like hypothermia where you yeah. Scoop up, Super cold, but you're just in shock. Right, so then you and when they're in that position, you want to turn their neck to one side, like like if an injury is not suspected or whatever. So like you don't keep it up. Like yeah, this. you want to just keep it to one side to make sure injuries don't happen. So uh, training for shock. So you when you want to let the person go, like you'd be like, oh, I'm here. Don't worry, you're not alone or whatever, because they're. Like, when you're in shock, you're feeling like you're alone. You're, like, you're just, like, like, you're in shock, you know what that means? You know STS, right? Yeah. Uh, so one episode in STS. No, no, keep it. Yeah. It's, like, shock. Uh, Meliodas, like, had shock. It, so, like, uh, they, so, like, they went into Meliodas' head and, like, tried to keep him, like, from getting shock. But and ca- keeping him from feeling alone, I feel like he get, like gave up. Yeah. All right. So you'd want, yeah. So you want to know, like he would be like, oh my god, why did this happen? Or whatever, right? So they want to know, oh, I'm here. Don't worry, nothing happened. Nothing right? will happen. Yeah, nothing will happen. I'm by your side and all that, right? Yeah. And then uh, this will keep them from the shock becoming worse, because like when you're alone. Uh, the shock, you're like, you get more shock, right? So you want to, whenever you can, you want to stay near them, yep. right? Yeah. All right, so the the first thing you want to do is call for help, right? Because that's the main thing, the main uh, thing. Thing for everything in here. Yeah, it, like what you're doing, everything in here, is you're trying to help them before that no one comes. Like you're trying to keep them so it doesn't get worse. Keep before. them from getting worse during one night or not. Yeah, before 9 comes. And if you want to know what 9 does, you join the 9 thing or you study further. You will know what 9 is. No, if you want to know what they do. Oh. Like, if you want to know what the first aid squad does or whatever. Like, right. they, like, get you in, like, a truck place. Yeah. No, I saw, I saw, uh, when I was coming back from, uh, Robbinsville, I saw a couple, uh, what, what's it called again? Medical trucks, like, with their lights flashing. So I think someone was in there. Yeah. I mean, it could be anything. It could be like hypothermia or uh, yeah, just uh, like heat that thing, like like the pump blood. You know that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that thing to pu- uh, pump blood. That's when you're losing blood. In these things, you don't really. But still, lose blood. yeah, it'll just help. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then so you want to treat for hurry, ca- hurry cases. So like, um, yeah, yeah, you treat for hurry cases, and um, you'd want to also check if they're back. Um, and you want to check if all their body functions are functioning properly, like if their back, neck, or head, or whatever. So, like, help them, like, twist to see. Yeah, you want to see. Properly. Yeah, if you twist don't see any of the back, head, or neck fractures. Or, or see any bones. Or any, yeah, or leg or vital uh, organs. I was or, watching this uh, movie about an army a couple of days ago, and, like, oh, uh, after the, like, the... The enemy, uh, since it was a Pakistani in uh, India, where it was India's POV, because uh, something it was something Pakistan did but caused the war. So like, uh, so they shot out like bombs and stuff, and then after that, like one of the leaders, 
uh, the person was trying to help him up, like one of the, like, you know, army yeah. members, and they're trying to help him up, but they saw a bone fraction. Yeah. But he sadly died. I'm very happy. In the movie. Very um, uh, sad. common and sad, yeah. In, pe in the movie, he sadly died. Yeah. Many movies do that. Yeah, I guess. Alright, so if you don't see any fractures or any vital organs are not working, then you keep them warm until help arrives. If not, then they're probably dead. Mm. If any of the vital organs don't work. Yeah. Yeah. Anything of these, if 911 doesn't ha uh, might not come, it could be very, very dangerous, but maybe causing death. Yeah. Like, it's very important to shock make might, sure you're near them. Like, you're... shock might cause heart attack, or heart attack might cause shock. Yeah. Alright, next slide. Hypothermia. This is the last one. Okay. Alright, so how to treat hypothermia. So you want to move the person to a shelter or somewhere where it's warm, and you put warm tissues all over it. Complete yeah. opposite from heat exhaustion. You want to keep them cold. You want to keep them warm. Right. Yeah. So I watched this a uh, show and like their plane crash. Not it's like it's not like a, a movie or anything like that. Like it was a show. Then so like they're surviving and one of the people uh, went to call again. Went to call nine one like the other side of the ship. He fainted from hypothermia. Yeah. But then nine one came got them. And then, like, they kept them in a kept them in a heat room, like a room where, like, there's heat stuff, like, to keep you warm. Yeah. All right. So, um, treating for hypothermia. Okay. So you put, uh, you put them in a warm shelter, and you want to put warm cloth, yeah, or clothing all over them. And yeah, like I said, don't make them go straight into a hot shower because you can get shock. Yeah. Right. Um, and like you'd want to call, uh, like, just. Keep them warm until first aid comes. Yeah. yeah. And then when they they'll also treat them in warm. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. Wait, so do you have any doubts on any of them? Like, do you no, uh, you said it pretty, you said it clearly. All right. Jack, are you going to test me or no? Just give me some easy questions, you know, try answering them. Okay. I'll just say how do you treat this now. Okay. All right. So let's look at this. Can you How three questions? Three questions from each? No, like three questions in total. I but, yeah. How do you treat uh for heat stroke and heat exhaustion? So first for heat stroke, uh which one should I do heat exhaustion or heat stroke? Just do both. Okay. So heat exhaustion first, um try to cool the uh, try to cool them down, like for heat stroke. And then, if needed, call nine one one. If it's not a heat stroke, but it's very, like, uh, like close to heat stroke. But for heat stroke, try to keep them cold. And then a couple of minutes afterwards, uh, th but like after you call nine one one and they're coming, probably keep them in a cold shower, but not too cold. Yeah, not really shower. You want to just keep them in a cold shower. Yeah, cold them somewhere. Uh, keep them somewhere like somewhere cold where heat stroke cannot like take over like. Kill them. Yeah, and which one's worse, heat stroke or heat exhaustion? Heat stroke. Yeah. By a lot. Yeah, because like you basically... You can it. die. Yeah, you can die by heat stroke. It's a very close chance if not treated. All right, not so 100% chance. Alright, so what is the main disease that you can get by a bite of a worm blood animal? Uh, re, uh, re, rabies. Yeah, rabies. Yeah, and Throughout if you do have a... Uh, Clean out know? the wound and uh, uh, if needed... No, and then call nine one one. Yeah, go to nine one one. Yeah, and then like if you have rabies. No, no, no. no go to the doctor to check if there's rabies, and then if no, you want to go straight to the hospital because if yeah. you do have rabies, they'll 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 check and treat you if you do. Yeah, because rabies is very serious. All right, last question. Yeah. Serious burns. How do you treat second degree and third degree burns? Yeah. Okay, so for second degree, uh, so you try to like keep it cold. When the medics are coming, you know. Okay, try to keep it cold, and yeah, try to keep the try try to keep it as cold as possible, but not uh like too cold where you can actually freeze your arm. Okay. And uh, 
and then third degree. Uh, so don't do anything. You're just basically just anyone. putting them in a cold area, right? Same with heat stroke. Yeah, like not heat stroke, but you're putting all the cold stuff yeah, on one Like cold uh, what? Ice, cold stuff. But for third degree burn, don't do anything in cold 911. Yeah, so you're putting them on the straight place. You're just putting it straight on there. Yeah. I right, got it. Yeah. And, um... Alright, so Thank you third for degree, third and degree. just third degree. Oh, thir yeah. Don't do anything cold on one. Yeah, okay. Thank good. you for having me, Akshat. Bye. Alright, bye. Yeah, so that's my uh, requirement five for communication. And yeah, bye.